Hey guys, welcome to CPL Fever. It's your host, Jacqueline Angemer, and today we are joined by Ibra Sano. He has one of the best goal scoring records I've ever seen, probably the best ever. And I'm so excited to talk with him. He's, been, he's a new Wanderers signing, and we just can't wait to talk with him today. So how are you? I'm good. I'm good, yeah. That's great. Well, so uh, where are you guys? Are you in the, uh, are you, you're in Halifax right now? Yeah, we're still in Halifax, yes. Okay. And how has the, how's it, how's it been t- training with the, uh, with the team? How have you been enjoying that? Uh, it's been good. It's been good. After a long break, it was really good to be back on the pitch and kicking the ball again and being in group. Even if it's a little group, it's better than just doing your own thing by, on your, uh, by yourself and stuff like that. So it was a good feeling. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And hopefully because a lot of the teams are starting, are like back to training, hopefully the season will start soon and we'll get to see you smashing some balls into the net. <laughs> Yeah, that's the plan. Finger crossed. Yeah. So, how did you get started playing soccer? Uh, to be honest, like I don't really know. I feel like it just uh, just came like that since I was a kid. I don't really remember what age, but uh, I feel like it was maybe just in the gym because my parents also played the sport, you no, know, like in a high level, but they played it like in university and college stuff like that. So yeah, that's how. I think I grew up with a sport and in the one mindset, just soccer in the head, no other sport. So, yeah, that's how, yeah, I won with it. So does everyone play in uh, where you're from in, in uh, Guinea? Yeah, mostly. Mostly, like, soccer is a big thing there. Like, we do basketball and stuff like that, but soccer is one of the main things that everybody plays, like, yeah. Okay. And um, so your parents, they they played, um, and how did they how did they help you develop as a soccer player? That's a little bit tough question because uh, as a kid, like I was just focused, I was just trying to focus on soccer more. But parents always want you to focus on school too, or try to focus on school first before you focus on soccer. But uh, I had a hard time balancing both of them at the same time when I was really young because uh, in my head, I just wanted to play soccer. I didn't really care about school and anything. But they helped me come to realize that I got to focus on both of them or on school first. And after school, I can try and focus on soccer. So they put me on the path that I should maybe finish school first before I 100% throw myself in soccer. So I did that. So whenever I was done school, that's when I they started showing their full support for the sport. And that made things easy and uh, made my focus and stress relax and everything. So, yeah. Okay. And so, so you're doing school and then how did you end up um, getting over to, to PEI? Okay. Uh, for PEI, like it's my dad. Uh, well, where I'm from, we speak French, mm-hmm. and uh, he moved to a country in Nigeria. Like uh, Nigeria is an English-speaking country, so he moved there for work. So after I finished high school, he wanted me to learn English too. So he decided to send me to Canada in a city where they only speak English. So that way, the transition would be better for me because if I move to a country where they speak French, it would be hard for me to learn English. So I moved. That's how my move came to PI because PI is, there's some French side, but it's basically like, I would say 90 or 80% English. So that's how PI came to the, to my radar. And did you, did you beg him to be like, just send me a little further west to Montreal? No, not really. At the moment, I didn't even know Montreal. My main focus in high, after high school, I wanted to go to France because mm-hmm. I speak French. It would be easy to, to blend in. And also soccer is big there. So Canada was never on my radar until my dad put it there. So I, he told me to try it. So I came, I tried it. Uh, took me a little bit of time with the cold and everything. But uh, uh, yeah, with time, when I started learning the language, and uh, yeah, the blending in wasn't too, too hard because of the sport. Soccer helped a lot. I, get, I got to meet a lot of people through soccer, even if I couldn't mm-hmm. communicate with them. But 
soccer is one language. Whenever you play it, it's just one way, even if you don't speak the same language. So. Right. Well, that must have been yeah. that must have been difficult to just be be dropped in an English speaking country and just kind of like, <laughs> you know, because. Yeah, yeah. Because like, you know, um, my, my wife is, is bilingual, so she speaks, she speaks French. But when we went to, to France, like yeah. I, can, I can tell when someone's speaking Fr- French because I, 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 I could, but I can't, I don't know what they're saying, you know, but I can, but I, but I, I know it's France, it's French. Yeah. So it's, I, it, yeah, and I, you know, studied a bit of French in school, so I can only imagine how, okay. how difficult that would have, uh, that would have been. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Because I can tell if someone's speaking in Spanish, because I'm learning Spanish. I can, I can, I know what they're saying just a little bit, but I don't know enough to just to be like dropped into Spain or a, Sp- or a totally Spanish speaking country. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you get um, there. Yeah. But I want to ask you about PEI. So, how was it? Could you tell us a bit more about how it was like playing in PEI? Uh, was different from back home for sure. Like uh, grass field and all that, even the game style, you know, speed and a lot of contact. Back home, we mostly play like uh, kind of like a possession game, moving the ball, sometimes using the wingers or not. Uh, but came to PI, and it was another different style. Use the winger more like. Uh, to create space, like a run, take people on the run and stuff like that. So yeah, and uh, at the moment I was just a winger because I was skinny and uh, really fast. So I was I was a winger. Sometimes play play I play as a striker sometimes at that moment because of the speed. But I was fully a winger, so it was too much on me, running forward and dropping back to defend too. It was too much, like too much on me. So I wasn't used to it. But uh, I got to a point I have to adapt because whenever you get into a new system, no matter what, you need a little bit of time to adjust. So after I, I adapt to the system, it was a little bit easy and yeah, it wasn't bad. It's a good experience yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so you found it a lot more physical here? Like the, the game was yeah. a lot more physical? Yeah. Oh, yeah, back home is physical, but just at, at some point, like they don't use physicality most of the time. But here, like physicality is part of the game. Like uh, you need to be willing to be in contact with someone to have some body contact. So you need some strength in you. So, yeah. And so basically in PEI, you went from, you started more as a winger. And by the end of your time at PEI, when you set all those goal scoring records, you've kind of migrated to mastering the striker position. Yes. That transition, okay. that transition wasn't easy because uh, as a winger, I was skinny and I was being bullied off the ball so easily. So I took myself a little bit of time off to get into the gym to build muscle. And that turned out to, for, to like, I built too much in a way that I can't be a winger anymore. I can be sometimes if it needed. But it turned out in a way that I built the muscle to be kind of like a top, like a nine to hold a ball and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But what helped me a lot is like uh, at the moment when I was building muscle and all that, I didn't lose my speed. I was still yeah. working on keeping it because sometimes players do the mistake of working on strength and everything and they forget about the speed and they lose it because mm-hmm. they, yeah. they're big and stuff like that. So Yeah, speed it. Okay, so you actually took some time. How much time did you take off to, to build muscle? Uh, I played for UPI, like uh, for the university in 2012. I had the 13 off, and uh, that 13 off, I built myself in the gym and stuff like that. So that's when, when 14 came, I decided to join Holland College. And that's, yeah, that's how things went from there. Yeah. So you took a whole year off soccer? Wasn't that, wouldn't that be difficult? No, no off soccer, like competitive. Why? I was still training with the team and stuff like that. So, oh. yeah. Yeah, but still, yeah. like not playing games. I mean, especially for someone that 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 plays as a forward. You know, obviously, you get a lot of joy from from scoring yeah, yeah. goals. Like yeah, yeah. that's 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 kind of like a dedication to kind of really say, okay, I'm going to change some things up. I'm going to build up muscle and yeah. you know really look at, at kind of my long term development as as a yeah, soccer yeah. player. 
Yeah. And that's an amazing, amazing commitment to take like 2013 off. And really, it really made you stronger and into the goal scoring machine you are today. Yeah, yeah, I guess the work pays off. Yeah, so, so what did you do as you were pulling up, building muscle? Um, what did yeah. you do to make sure that you, you maintain that speed? Yeah. Uh, well, what I did is uh, I first, like, I still go to the gym, like, Monday to Friday. I do muscle. Like, I pick the body part that I want to build on. I go a little bit heavy on them to build the muscle. But at the same time, every Friday, I don't do the muscle side. I put some cone for the speed and agility work of movement. So that way, I don't lose that. So I'm balancing them. But at the same time, I'm trying to build muscle fast. But I'm still trying to keep the speed and movement. So, yeah, that's how I did the transition. So did you change your diet during that time as well? Yes, I did. Because at first I wasn't eating healthy. So I got to a point that uh, because they told me, like, you can go to the gym no matter how you want. But if you're not eating healthy and the right food, you won't get what you want. And knowing that I'm the kind of person, like, I can put a timer for myself, like, to have food. Like, I can be like, I got to wake up at this moment, eat at 9, and don't eat until 12 now. So I decided to go with a flow where I just I can eat whenever I want, but I just need to make sure it's something healthy. Like that will help me build muscle. So what was your favorite healthy food then? What was the snack, the healthy snack that you were craving all day? Healthy snack? Or mm. healthy food? Uh, the healthy food that I was basing myself on was... Uh, I found this veggie, like the veggie that I can eat any day, anytime. Broccoli. Okay. I wasn't a big veggie fan, but uh, broccoli is the one veggie that I can eat any day, like anytime. So I made sure that so I have a broccoli, some broccoli, like some white rice and some chicken. Or sometimes switch it to ground beef instead of chicken and rice or sometimes pasta. But broccoli is always part of my, my meal plan. So um, is there a special way that you like to cook it with lemon juice or roasting it or um, how you like to cook no. it? I just basically, I just boiled broccoli. And for the, for the chicken, sometimes if I'm lazy, I put it in the oven. If I'm not lazy, I just fry it. So it depends on the day. <laughs> yeah. So in PEI, I guess there's not a lot of um, West African cuisine. What, uh, what, what did you miss most from back home? Uh, from back home, like there's this sauce that, I don't know the name in English, but they call it uh, my, my in my in my language. Mm -hmm. And it's basically kind of like I see the, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's kind of like basically the peanut, peanut butter. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like uh, it's close, similar to butter chicken. If you guys have had uh, Indian yeah. chicken before, butter chicken, it's yeah, kind of close to that. So that's why I like having the butter chicken because it basically it doesn't don't they don't taste the same, but it's close. So it's basically kind of peanut butter sauce, and they put some veggie in it, oil and chicken and all that, and some spice. So yeah, so that's the so that, that's the food I really miss the most for sure. Yeah, that yeah, sounds that good. Sounds, that sounds really good, and especially since yeah. we love butter chicken. Um, yeah, that's why I love butter chicken too, because it's close. It made it make me just uh, remind me of like things from home. Yeah, and it's hard to get spicy food here in yeah, in, in Nova Scotia. Yeah, we we normally have to like buy all these spices online to make our food like really spicy, and mm, okay. Yeah, we my one of my one of my favorites is cayenne pepper or um, a Moroccan spice harissa. What's um, what's your favorite spice? Uh, my favorite spice. Uh, I basically don't have a favorite. What I do, I just mix them all to get a flavor that I may like. I like trying things, like things up, like mixing them to bring my own flavor out. <laughs> it's not like I can repeat it twice. Sometimes I make a sauce, and when I try to make the same sauce, it doesn't taste the same because I, miss, <laughs> I don't measure things, so I just go with the flow. I like that. I like yeah, that. Yeah. So sometimes you're going to have the best meal ever, and you don't even know yeah. it. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes. One time only. <laughs> yeah. And and then maybe in a couple of weeks you're gonna have another best meal ever. I really yeah, like that. Surprise, like that. surprise. Yeah. yeah. Surprise. It. So um yeah, so getting back to soccer, do you like yeah. playing as a, a a a target man or kind of more get in get in behind and use your speed? Uh, I don't mind either of them. Like uh, I can basically do both of them even at the same time. Uh, but I before I used to be uh, I, like I just used, used to like the ball coming in the air and me making the run for it, but these days like uh, I don't mind showing up for to fit. I like to fit sometimes because it gives me ability to turn and face the target, and that way I haven't used my speed yet, and I'm still 100% like uh, good to attack. But sometimes whenever you do the run behind, after you get the ball, maybe you have used some of your strength already. You're maybe a little bit tired to face three guys or two defenders and the goalie. So yeah, so I don't mind either of them. Like I'm comfortable with, with both. Yeah, and shooting on both feet. I mean, like if 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 you got a defender on your back, you can turn either way. Yeah, I can turn either way and shoot on both feet. Like uh, I I'm I'm a righty, so I mostly mm -hmm. shoot on my right, and uh, I can shoot on my left. But uh, I don't know what. But I have this mindset in my head that uh, make me think twice before I shoot on my left. Even even coach have told me to. He has. He has told me to try and cross my left because I can shoot with my left. I'm comfortable shooting on it, but sometimes I just have this mindset. I always want to bring it on my right. But lately, lately I've been trying to change that. And if it's on my left, it's on my left. If it goes in, yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. good because one of the players last year that we had was, was very left-footed. And you, you could kind of see like in the games, like the, the other team's defenders – kind of knew he would always be going to his left, you know? Um, so they were, so they were able to, to read that. But, but for me, yeah. Um, I find when I'm playing, you know, I, I'm right footed too, but most of the time or probably about half the time, the opportunity comes on my left foot, you know, and you know, you just got to do what you can do with, with yeah, it. especially yeah. since he's a left back. So he savors all the opportunities he gets. <laughs> and he, <laughs> And he taught me how to use my left foot in, at an early age too. So I'm pretty good with my left foot. Daddy's that's, that's good. pretty good too. <laughs> that's yeah, that's good. Because if you if you if you're comfortable with both foot, even if they know that you're righty, there's still gonna be a word that you can still use your left. So you have more more ways to attack, more ways to shoot, and you know you can do the you know you can shoot at any time. So goalies will be really scared of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so and your coach your coach in at uh at holland what was one yeah, of the yeah. things that he did that that really like improved your game because you were just kind of dominant in that in that league i mean record setting all that stuff yeah. uh, my first year when i joined him like he knew me before so we played against each other we played in the same team so i was mostly playing as a as a striker when i joined him and uh, he gave me this freedom of, uh, we had three front. So I had the freedom to go to the left side or the right side. But whenever I go there, the person who's there just go inside. So he kind of gave me the freedom to be around the attacking area, like drop deep in the midfield, get the ball and all that. So that kind of improved my game on being, on the, being comfortable on the ball and uh, also opening space for others. So... And he worked on my defensive side too because I was a striker in my mindset. Like uh, strikers don't defend, which is <laughs> attack. Side. So he helped me work on my defensive side. So yeah, that actually improved my game way better. Okay, nice. Yeah. And you have said that you can both you can be like a target man, and a lot of or you can run in behind but i was wondering is there a skill move that you like to use when you're on the pitch yeah uh, i would say my best skill move is the body movement the body feint because mm -hmm. it's one of the skill move that you don't know, really need to be too good at it a small mm -hmm. move can make a defender move and you know your last move already he doesn't but so if the body move move them in a way that you can like you can decide where you want to go so mm -hmm. and it's quick if you do it quick 
like you you can dribble any defender you face for sure yeah it's really quick simple but it's really yeah. effective it's one of the moves it's kind of like a scissor but it's on i feel like it i think it's even faster than a scissor but it's so effective yeah. oh yeah it is so how did you get to uh, 30, 31 goals in 14 games, um, all-time top goal scorer? How did you – how were how, how, how you so dominant in, in, that, uh, in that league that you were playing in before? Uh, I would say, like, the credit, we mostly got to my teammates, like, to be honest. Like, uh, that last season where I got the 31, like, the 31 goals in the 14 games, like uh, the first five, the first five game or the first five or four games, I was scoring, but it came to a point where I was in, I did two or close to three games without scoring, and uh, mm-hmm. those games, the thing is like uh, I was trying to score in the game, but it wasn't working out. So I figured like if it's not working out for me, let me just create the space and maybe get some assist. Maybe it's just not my day. So it went two games without a goal. I got a little bit frustrated because uh, my goal was my last season. I was I was gonna break my 26 goal record in 12 games. I was gonna break that. That was my goal. So coming to let's say five games to the end of the season, I'm just at uh, seven. I'm just at 15 or 16. It was a little bit frustrating. So, but I have I had good teammates like they calmed me down. They told me to relax. Goal will come. Even my coach and all that. And uh, I got to a point, everybody was just trying to find me. So that made it so easy. We went to playoffs. I needed, uh, I don't know, four goals. For the last, yeah, two games left, and I needed four goals to to break the record. First game, I only scored one. And the last game of the season, I needed three at least there. <laughs> And, uh, but the mindset I went in the game is like, uh, I'm not going to focus myself on that too much because if I do, I may just not have a good game. So I'll just go with the flow, play my game. If it comes, it comes. And in that last game, I got to score three three goals. Like, got a hat trick before the end of the game. So, yeah. nice. So, yeah, mostly it's and, my teammates, basically. Yeah, and you scored 101 goals in 70 games. And that is also just so incredible and that means you averaged 1.4 goals per game so did that give you pressure when you weren't scoring goals or did or like you said would you just go back into the flow and goals would come all right didn't give me too much pressure because whenever you're in the game as a striker your mindset is like the team depends on you to score Mm -hmm. but uh as a striker, I've seen like strikers like in Europe and all that. They play how many games? They don't score, but they're still good and they still create and they still get assist. So, whenever I play a game and uh, first twenty or even like half time, I don't score. I just stay in the same game state, like same game plan. The game plan is to get the three point. It's not all about me. It's all about yeah. the team. If I get a goal, good. If another person get a goal, good. At the end of the day, it's the team that wins. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, whenever I go with that flow, like, it won't take time. I know at the end of the day, two, three games or four, uh, there will be a point where I'm going to have, where I'm going to be there, like, facing the mm-hmm. net. Maybe. Like, so, I'll just take my opportunities. I, I won't let it stress me because if, you, if I let it stress me, I'm not going to have a good game. I'm just going to be upset shooting every time even if i'm not close to the net so yeah and i also want to ask you what is your favorite formation to play in my favorite formation to play in i've been playing in like a four four two four two three one like uh, i don't mind being the only one on top there and i also don't mind being having a second striker close to me so I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable with any formation you put me in. Just uh, yeah, I don't have a big favor. I'm just uh, I just respect what I've been told, and so yeah. Good, good. What do you think of uh, what do you think of playing with your new teammates? Like, uh, I, like I enjoy it really well. Like, the first three days like was wasn't the best because 
we all new to each other and stuff like that. Well, the way things have been going lately, like you know now how the other player make their run, you know how they won the ball and all that. So the team shape, shape is getting there. And also, yeah, it's enjoyable playing with uh, such a talented players and stuff like that. It's another level for sure. But with time, yeah, it it's good so far. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and from what I've been hearing from all the players and you and everybody is that the Wanders have been doing great in back to training and just all of this training. They've been doing really good. So hope, hopefully we'll be able to see them on the pitch soon. Hopefully. Yeah. So, um, so obviously the Wanders had some trouble scoring last year. You know, you're the only, like, I guess I could say traditional, like number nine. Um, yeah. you know, with, with, you know, kind of size and, and, and strength up there. So what, what did Stephen Hart see in you that he's given you so much confidence that you're obviously going to play an important part this season, right? So what did, what did Stephen Hart see in you where he's like, wow, this guy's really got something? I would say my strength, like, and uh, my ability for holding the ball or even if I have a defender behind me, like struggling with me and stuff like that. And also like my unexpected speed because defenders think because since I'm a big guy, they don't expect me to be fast. You know, they expect me to be maybe a little bit slow and stuff like that. But uh, I don't I don't show my speed right away when game starts. I just wait to be patient for the right moment because mm-hmm. after you show it, they know. So now next time they're going to be ready for it. So, yeah, yeah, so I would say my strength. Um, you were talking about your speed. So, in your opinion, is your first, um, like, time you get the ball, like, in front of the net, the most important time to score for you? In front of the net, yeah, well, especially when you're inside the penalty box. I feel like whenever you get the ball, then you have it, even a tiny little space, if you can try to put it in the net, uh, I think you should, yeah, I should take the chance. Worst come to worst, the goal is just going to, maybe save it and you come back to somebody else that will put it in so yeah and you were on one of the wanders instagram lives right yes i was and i remember talking to you about your idol he was cristiano ronaldo right who you have a poster of (laughs) yeah you know it (laughs) so could you tell us a bit more about why you love cristiano ronaldo yeah, first of all, he started as a winger too, and with a number seven. That's how I follow the flow. And uh, knowing with the age and everything, he switched as a striker. So, and also like his uh, ability of trying to find the net, his uh, anger, like uh, anger for the game, for goals and everything. He's not, he doesn't like losing. Mm-hmm. Not, like he's kind of like not a good loser. He just doesn't like losing. So. Mm-hmm. Having that mentality as a player that actually push it in a way that you want to win every game. That's one mentality that every player should have. Like it's not like okay, we lost today, tomorrow is another day. Yeah, that will come. But whenever you step on the field, like your know, first mentality and everything should be like you just get the win. He has that ability, he has that mentality, and he's strong in the air on the ground. Mm-hmm. So he has a lot of yeah, he has a lot of ability. So putting him as my idol and trying to work for what I want and pushing myself to go to the gym, build something that I don't have. That's what he did because he was, he wasn't strong like this before he has to work for it. So that work mentality is just, yeah, put, put him there in the way that I want to do the same if I want to be one of the best. Yeah. I, I, I really I like that. Ed. Arnaldo is such a great idol. And I think you're well on your way to achieving, um, your goals and what you want. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, no, I, I really like that answer because most people, when they talk about Cristiano Ronaldo, they talk about his his skill first. And what I noticed about you is you talked about his his kind of intensity, his drive, his dedication, and that winning that winning mentality. And I think that when people, yeah, his you know, people people always compare like like Messi and Ronaldo. And the one thing that I think doesn't get mentioned enough is I think Ronaldo has more of that drive to win, you know, and that drive to like, he'll put his head on the ball. He'll like, 
do whatever. He has, he's that more of just that kind of, you know, desire to, to kind of score, I guess. Yeah, he does. So, yeah, I really like that you, that you point that out. And if you bring that to the Wanderers, then we should be good. We should be good. <laughs> yeah, I think the Wanderers score like a low, a league low 28 or 26 or 27 around that. But, uh, but you, you've scored more than that in one season. So I'm, ex- I'm really excited to see you play. I'm sure we'll, this season will smash that record. <laughs> That's the plan. So, yeah, so, so in the last 12 months, so obviously you, you've kind of, sorry, b- before that, so you, you kind of worked on your strength, you know, and then you had those, that success in, in, uh, in PEI and whatnot. What have you been working on in the last 12 months in your, in your game? In the last 12 months, I was still going to the gym, but I was doing light weights because I already have the body that I wanted to have. Well, now to maintain it and keep it, I just can just not show up at the gym and do some some exercise I used to do before. But so I started going, still going to the gym and doing the weights that I was doing like lighter. Like if I was doing, let's say I was doing like for chest, I was doing like 45. I can cut it down to 25 or something like that, just to keep the shape. And also doing some gym, like some training inside the gym floor because the, like uh, whenever you're used to having the ball to your feet on the gym floor, it, it, can try and, it can take that transition to the game. So doing some cone work in the gym floor, like closer, ball closer to your feet and stuff like that, no big space, just a tiny space. And also doing some finishing because as a striker, I got to work on my finishing and stuff like that. And the ability to check in, get the ball, pass it to a midfielder and get it um, pass, like a diagonal pass to you to run inside the box to finish. So that's what I've been working on for, yeah, basically. And uh, picking a day to do some cardio, like I would go on the internet, like check on some athletes' cardio. Like the other day I saw the John Terry cardio where it's really crazy. Like you run for like, uh, you put the the treadmill incline like to 12 and mm-hmm. run like full speed, like for 30 seconds and get off it. You got like 40 seconds of break and get on it again. You try to do that like 15 or 16 times. Mm-hmm. So yeah, those kind of things, like those are the kind of things I've been working on before all this, yeah. Wow, nice. Nice, that sounds yeah. good. The treadmill sounds pretty, really intense. <laughs> yeah, it is. Because <laughs> you're, you're going at full speed for a short amount of time, and then you're getting yeah. a break, and then you're going again full speed for a short amount of time, and then you break full speed speed <laughs> yeah, yeah it sounds very it's basically like yeah it's kind of like when you're playing soccer yeah it's not you're not yeah. gonna run full speed for 90 minutes you're gonna run full speed and maybe get a little bit of jogging before you get to the other attack again or maybe cool off a little, little bit so just mm-hmm. working on those things can help you boost your cardio so yeah so um let's let's get back to school so obviously school was important for you um you mentioned that earlier and uh, so you took marketing and advertising. So yeah, what? Yeah. yeah, tell me about that. Why did you Why did you choose marketing and advertising? Mm, at first, when I went when I moved to Holland College, I didn't know what courses to take. They put me into a course called Foundation. I just wanted to play soccer for them, but they put me in a course played Foundation. So in that Foundation, I took marketing as an elective, like just uh, a side class. So the first semester I fell in love with the class because you get to talk in class. It's all about like, it's in the business side, how to market things, how to sell things. And uh, so that caught my eyes and I was like, okay, maybe let me give it a try. So that's why I went there. And also it's a class where you gotta express yourself. Like you gotta talk to everybody, convince people to do something, like to get the product from you, you gotta convince them. And it's something that I like to do, convincing people to do something. So, I'm like, <laughs> why not? Let me give it. A, let me give it a shot. And I and I liked it. Yeah, and I th- and I feel and I think um, that you also convinced the goalies just to lay your your um, all of your shots in because you <laughs> score so many goals. <laughs> You're definitely very good at convincing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. That marketing. Yeah, marketing is a great a great skill to uh, to learn. 
So that's that's interesting. And I mean, to be honest, I mean, so much of of, of soccer is is you know about you know selling a move too. You know what I mean? Just yeah. to kind of just to yeah. kind of get that little bit of space. So yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that works as an internet marketer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so so tell me about uh, some of the obstacles that you've overcome in your in your soccer journey. Maybe you had like an injury or or uh, you know a uh, setback or yeah. or you got cut somewhere. I I had an injury back in 2015, 16, like a, kind of like an injury. I was just playing the summer summer league before school uh, preseason started and. July, so I was just playing the game, and uh, I don't know what happened. I couldn't walk well. I didn't even finish the game. I have to step out. So I went to the physio, got that checked out. They told me to stay off the field for two months. So I was just going to physio for the last two months before preseason start. But she wanted me to be back for preseason, so I, I said, okay. So I decided not to play for that remainder of the summer. So I took care of it, and whenever I started feeling coming back, I started going to the field to work it out. So that set, that put me back, that put me out for two months. And uh, when I came back, I was uh, since I took my time, I was fully ready to go back on the field, even if I used to feel a little bit of symptom on it because it's something that happened two months ago. But I managed to play the full season with it. It never came back on me, and. Uh, yeah, and uh, after that, yeah, I think that's the only one. The second one, I would say, is just a concussion, but uh, that was off season too. So that took me out for just two, for just a month. And uh, yeah, I think that that's it, technically. Yeah, glad you and recovered well. Thanks. You gotta listen to the physios. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I've had my fair share of um, going to the physio too. <laughs> <laughs> So tell me about tell me about mindset. You know, how do you how do you get get mentally prepared for a game? How do you kind of keep that mindset so that you can kind of be uh, a top performer, a top athlete? Uh, before every game, I have this routine where I watch videos of uh, Ronaldo, Neymar, Messi, mostly all like mostly attackers. So I watch this video and see how they make their move off the ball and on, on the ball and all that. So that kind of prepare me for a game. And uh, I listen to my music too, just to clear my mind. I'm only focusing on the game. I even start picturing things that I can do in the game if I'm in this situation and uh, stuff like that. And whenever I get in the game, I only focus on the game. I don't think about anything else. It's just, it's just the game. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's a great thing about soccer. And I also wanted to ask you, is there a quote that you really like or one that you live by? Yeah, if there's a quote I, I would live by, just never say never, because you never know. Like, I've been wanting to be pro for since, I, like, I don't even remember, since I was a kid. A lot of people have told me, uh, you got to give up, you're getting old, uh, you never know, you may not never make it. You know, you gotta give up, but in my head, giving up is not an option to me. I'm gonna go. I don't wanna be the person who, who's gonna grow up and like be old, be like, oh my God, if I knew I would have done this to be pro, what about if I was a pro? What about if I tried? So, told myself, like, I'm never gonna give up, even if I just get to be a pro just for a day. Why not? So, I kept going. So, I was just saying, never give up on anything. Yeah. yeah. And you now you're a pro. It, yeah, if you believe in it, you can make it happen. If yeah. You believe. Yeah, I love that never say never. I really like that. And look at you now, you're a pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, you went for a trial with, uh, with TFC2, right? Yes. With uh, the TFC Academy. So how did, how did you get on the, the, the radar of, of TFC? How did that come about? And what happened? Uh, okay, uh, it was after my se- my last season at Harlem College, uh, in this in November, my co- in this yeah November December, my coach told me that TFC have invited me for a three day trial, and uh, if uh, I would like to go, nah, 
I couldn't believe it. I thought it was just, you know, just a dream. I'm like, yeah. So I went there and they were hosting a trial for some M like MLS draft trial, mm -hmm. those kind of thing before going to the big MLS trial. So I went there for three days, uh, played and trained in those three days. And after that, I got back home. Two weeks later, I got an email by mm -hmm. TFC that they would like me to join them in the preseason. Like they invited me for two weeks preseason. And after the two week preseason, they would let me know if they're going to give me a contract or not. So, so whenever I got there, the first coach that was there for the tryout was promoted to the first team. So they have to step in another coach. So that was a little bit of a challenge on me because that coach, now, that coach is not the one who got me. Right. Invited. Yeah. So that was a little bit tough on me. So I came for, I was supposed to be there with you for two weeks. So played, played after the first week, the coach asked me, he saw my fitness level wasn't the same as the, as the auto. So the coach asked me like, uh, uh, how long will it take you to push your fitness level high if we give you somebody to help you out? Yeah, he first asked me, like, uh, what do you think about your fitness level compared to others in here? I told him, like, to be honest, like, even myself, I know my fitness level is not in the same level as them because they've been in the system for a little while. And uh, I came from a system, like, college system. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's not the same as it U USL team system. So mm -hmm. I told him, I told him if I have somebody, I'm sure like I can be back on the same level or even close in two weeks if I have someone. He said, OK. And uh, after he talked to me on Friday, on Monday, he still had, he didn't give me anybody to train with and anything like to boost my fitness. But uh, since uh, that talk on Friday, that kind of boosts my confidence up because showed that the coach saw something in me because he gave me the compliment that he sees a good thing in me that I have abilities and stuff like that. So that kind of boosts my confidence in the way that I feel like that I even increased my own fitness without even doing fitness. I came on Monday, I played so well, I scored five goals in training. And that whole week, I played so well in the way that they decided to make me do a medical on Friday. So did that medical uh, with the, because before, before the preseason started, they, Gave, gave us a sheet to fill it up and everything to yeah. write any injury we happened before and all that. So that my past injury in 2016 kind of caught up to me because I wrote it down and everything. So they kind of checked me out, uh, you know, and sent me to the doctor and stuff like that. So that happened and they were like, uh, I had that injury before and uh, they kind of got scared in the way that if they signed me, and I get injured in the same spot, what gonna happen? And uh, one thing that didn't help me much, they had a preseason game in uh, in the state, but I couldn't travel because I was an in international, I couldn't go into the state, so I have to stay in Toronto. So that kind of removed some of my chances on making the team. And uh, we had a game, like, when they came back, they, we had a game against uh, Ottawa Ferry, so the coach told me, okay, against the game auto you're gonna play. So that would be maybe your chance to prove yourself. So when that game came, I thought like maybe I'm gonna get a decent amount of time because all the preseason game, the maximum time I got was just 17 minutes mm -hmm. at the end. So I thought like maybe I'm gonna start or maybe start second half, whatever happened. So first half I didn't start. So second half I was hoping to get at least some minute to prove myself and i also didn't start that i did also didn't start that second half i only got on the field until it was like 82 minutes into the game so that kind of that kind of killed my confidence in the way that uh, i don't know what i could have done in that eight minute to prove myself no matter what happened i got to touch the ball maybe twice so after the game, I had a talk with him. He started, I had a talk with him. He told me, like, the team, the first team have signed so many strikers. So some of them may not get the chance to play in the first team. So they need to drop down the second team, and like in the uh, TFC2. And they need, in their contract, they need to play 90 minutes to keep the fitness high. So that the club doesn't want to sign me to just 
play me for two minutes or eight minutes or maybe not even or drop me into the academy with my age I can be you know it won't be fair to me so they just kind of they just have decided to just let me go so yeah that's hard like it was a little bit it was a little bit hard it was really hard on me but they kept me for like a two they kept me for like a month and two weeks I was supposed to be only there for two weeks so from ending of January until March I was there wow so, that's good yeah so that that was really hard and uh, went back uh, took some week for me to get back in my head because I kind of gave up on it a little bit and the only thing that helped me was it was my first time trying out for a team for sure like uh, that kind of level so I didn't let that break me or bring me down I uh, actually used I used it as a as a lesson and also I thank them because they kind of changed my game style because after that after that preseason with them when I came I was a different person my mindset my game style everything changed and I got to a point that I was using my body more because I didn't realize that I had a big body that I can use in soccer in a way that when I protect or take my ball it would be hard for others to take it from me so because the coach in Toronto told me that I'm a big guy I should be comfortable using my body because if I use my body I have better chances of keeping the ball right yeah yeah so that's how the thing went well I'll be I'll be looking forward to see you in the in the CPL with uh, you know Boston those Boston those uh, opposing center backs around that should be good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so how did um, how did Stephen Hart get uh, get in contact with you? Like, uh, like yeah. did he I see you he... play somewhere? Or... No, it's after that uh, that Toronto when I came back in in March in June in June. My Holland College coach told me that uh, because I knew about CPL happening in Canada, but the, since there was no date on it, and I knew Halifax was going to have a team, and I even. With some friends, we even said when Halifax get a team, oh, we gonna come here for a tryout just to try our luck. So my coach told me that the coach in uh, uh, Steven is the coach for Halifax, and he would like to he wants to invite me for that Atlantic selection that he's doing. So and at the like we come train for a week and play against a German team on uh, on the weekend. If I'm interested in it, I said yeah, sure. Because at that time I needed something to, you know, prove myself, and I still, I'm still, in, I was still in the chase of the dream. So that happened. July came, and then July, like end of July, last week of July, I came down to Halifax. Yeah, we started training morning and evening for that week, and we got to play. And uh, yeah, that's that's how Steven. Yeah, I started working with Steven. And what's yeah? What's one thing that 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 Steven's done to uh, to improve your game? Has he has he helped you? Um, give me some tips or or. Oh yeah, because yeah, because I'm the kind of striker like I like I I know myself that I have I have a powerful shot, but uh, sometimes I just use it at the wrong moment. Sometimes so sometimes when I use it, it goes straight to the goalie or it goes completely out. So he told me to work more on placing the ball. Like rather than using, I can still use the power, but I should think about placing it. So since I started doing that, I even I even saw it in myself that I'm getting more goals in training than my usual self, just blasting the ball for power. Because power, sometimes power, you don't direct the way it goes, but if you place it, you have the full control of where you want to put the ball. Okay. So he so he has improved like, my game and also like how to hold on people on my back when I check up for the ball because I like to check up for the ball and uh, keeping the ball and just moving not just moving in one touch because sometimes the one touch can just bounce back and yeah. you can lose the ball so if you take your touch you have more control of picking your passes than just bouncing it back to it can be a bad ball and one touch so the two touches give you the privilege of just giving a good passes okay yeah. so your shot's nice. even better 
Can't wait. Yeah, so Can't wait for the, yeah, so the season to begin. Yeah. Yeah. Your records were, your record is amazing already, but now with uh, Steven helping with that, it sounds like you're going to break, I, I feel like you could break your records again. Yeah, and also, yeah, he has put me in the spot that I need to use my left foot more because I'm I, like I can shoot with my left, even myself I know yeah. that. But uh, in the mindset of being a righty all the time, so I want to get the shot so right because my right can I'm in full control of my right where I want to put the ball. But my left, sometimes I just shoot to put it on target. So yeah. Well, I'm sure you'll get some with, with both feet this year once it once it gets started. Yeah, hope, hopefully. Yeah. And I'll be I, watching I, for it. I'll be watching. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll cheer double when you when when you bang one in with your left. For sure. <laughs> and I want to ask you, what is your favorite soccer moment? Uh, I would say it's my last year at Holland College, to be honest. Like, uh, I played four years there, but never got to have any medal in national. Like, uh, in the maritime, like, we own all the four, 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 all my four years, we won the cup and went to national. First year was in the best, we came last. Second year, we came eighth in the country. Third year, we came uh, fifth. So I thought like the improvement is coming. So my last year, I decided to go all out. Like uh, I was even in that year, I even went home to visit family. So I, only, uh, I dedicated like a month to just train. There while I'm even visiting just for vacation, but I dedicated one month to just train because I wanted to make the last year the best. So whenever I came, we had this one mindset that we're going to come back home with a national medal, no matter what medal it is. We won gold, but we're coming home with something. So that year, I think we played 19 games or 18. We only lost one game all season. And won the 17 or the 9, yeah, 18. So we went to, we made it to national first game. We lost to Keanu. That was a heartbreaking. When you lose the first game, you you know, you're already, you're out for, you're out for the gold. So we took that in for the first three hours after the game. It was really painful. No, I wasn't even focusing on the tournament anymore. I was completely out because that's my last year. That means I can't get a gold for Holland College anymore. So, but we had a meeting in that night saying that uh, on gold still on the on on the run. We came for something. We still in the game because after that lost, we just have to win four four game to to win the medal, the bronze. Okay, bronze. Yeah. So the second, uh, the next morning we had a game. We won that game, and after that we won the next one. And uh, that's how we went until we made it to the final. And we made it to the final against the same team that beat us the first game. Mm -hmm. And we won by 1-0. Nice. And, uh, that was one of the moments that, yeah, I will never forget for sure. Nice. That must have been a great soccer moment. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, Jack, do you want to go into the uh, rapid fire questions? Or do you have any last questions um... first? No, I think let's go on to, our, on to the rapid fire. A rapid fire is my favorite, so I'm super excited to ask you these rapid fire questions. So let's get started. Do you play FIFA? Yes, I do. PS4, Xbox? PS4. Are you good? Okay. Uh, I'm not bad. Yeah, I would say I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your favorite fruit? Favorite fruit... Uh... Before it was apple, banana, but now it's kiwi. Okay. Yeah. I haven't had kiwi in a while. I should get some kiwi. <laughs> um, yes. What is your favorite goal you have scored? My favorite goal? Yeah, you have scored. As a stretch. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you've scored so many happen. goals. You've scored so many goals that I bet there's a ton of them. <laughs> I would say the favorite one would be the... Uh, in 2000, my, sec uh, my second year, I think, or, yeah, second year, we're playing in, uh, especially we're playing in Halifax, uh, in Holland College, like final against King College. Game was 1-1, 80, 88 minutes. We got a free kick, like in the midfield, like uh, right close to the circle. And uh, I've noticed the whole game that the goalie's gloves were a little bit slippery because it was raining. 
So I decided to take that last shot and I took it in. I shot it. The goalie came for it. He was comfortable to catch it. But whenever he caught the ball, the ball kind of slipped in your hand and went in. And we and we won that cup to qualify to, to national that day. So, <laughs> so yeah. Wow. <laughs> that must have been an amazing goal, almost to the circle. Yeah, close to the circle. Um, and what is one superpower you'd like to have? One superpower? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> now, we can't actually give it to you. This is just hypothetical. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Everyone says these questions are hard. A lot of them say these questions are hard. I, I don't... <laughs> one superpower. I would say control of time. Okay. That's a, that would be a fun one. So if, yeah. you, so if you didn't score, you could just turn back time and keep... You got it. You got it right. <laughs> Do you cook? Yes. Okay. What's your favorite thing to cook? Favorite thing to cook? Mm, maybe chicken. Okay. And what is one food that everybody needs to try? One well, guess, fruit? Food? Um... What is one food? But I guess it's uh, the food that you were talking about earlier, right? I would say that, but also there's another food from Senegal. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, called called uh, chebujin. It's kind of like, uh, fr- it's close to fried rice, but it's not fried rice. It comes with a fish and uh, yeah, it's really good. The veggies and stuff like that. Uh, it's good food. That sounds really good. <laughs> yeah. You're making me hungry. And, yeah. <laughs> what is the and what is the biggest crowd you've ever played in front of? Uh, was the, the the Atlantic selection crowd? I think it was I don't know five thousand, six thousand. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, two years. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully, when you play your um, uh, when the season starts, you'll um get like seven thousand. <laughs> yeah. Because we usually, we normally sell the house. Um. Like sell the house out. I forget what the word, what the um thing it's what you say when you sell the house out or like when you sell out. There's somewhere, but I can't remember it right now. Um, what's your favorite book? Favorite book? Uh, that's kind of hard because uh, I'm not a big reader. Mhm. Yeah, but I, I bought this Ronaldo's book that shows all his achievements and everything. So yeah. Nice. And what's your favorite movie? Our favorite movie, I would say The Avengers. Okay, which one? And that's the thing, all of them. Oh, this, oh, I, would the oh. End, I would say the end game, the end game. Okay, that is, we, we only watched, started watching, we only watched our first Marvel movie in quarantine. Dai wasn't a huge fan of the Marvel movies, me and mine like it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, what is your favorite board game? Favorite board game, I would say cards. Okay. What kind yeah. of cards? I forgot. I always forgot the name. It's uh Uno? I think uh, no Uno. No Uno. It's something eight. Uh, crazy eight. Crazy eight, yeah. Okay. Yeah, crazy eight <laughs> is very fun. And yeah, what yeah, and what kind of soccer boots do you wear? Uh, right, right, no, Nike Mercury. Yeah. Oh, that, that's yeah. what Cristiano re- wears, right? Yes. <laughs> I just feel like it's tight on your legs, and I like my boots really tight, like uh, no space inside it. Because when there's space inside my boot, I feel like I'm not in control of my shorts. So. Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard of True Socks? True Socks? Yeah, I just found out about it. It's like apparently some of the footballers wear it. They got little grippies like all over, so it keeps oh, keeps your your foot yeah. from slipping around. Yes, yes, I've seen it. Yeah. And they have the dots up the back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you have those or? No. no okay. No. Yeah, I just found out about them yesterday. So anyhow, okay. And what is one thing that people don't know about you, but they would be surprised to know about you? I'm not a scary person. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm chill. I'm chill. You know, like when people so, like at first when people see me, they think um I intimidate them or whatever, like because I'm big and whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, yeah. At first, I got a little story for that. Like uh, 
at Holland College when I was there and I wanted to work at Kent's camp, like with the kids. Yeah. Nobody knew that I was good with the kids. So my, my old boss, he didn't give me the job at the time. Well, one day I was working at the front desk and they did have somebody inside with the kids. And whenever I went in, the way she saw me with the kids, the next day she gave me a full time job for it. So, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, we definitely didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> and three words to define you, what would they be? Three words? Mm-hmm. I would say kind. Okay. Patient. Okay. And ambitious. I really, yeah, that's a, a really good mix of them. <laughs> kind, patient, and ambitious. And this is my last rapid fire question. What are your goals for the future? For the future? Yeah. Like uh, soccer wise or? Anything, anything wise. Okay, for the future, maybe set up a a, a record in the CPL that would take maybe a lot of years before they break it and lay down somewhere with a little family and everything, you know, just settle down, just, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. That sounds nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think you can definitely achieve all of those things. And I just want to say thank you so much, Ibra, for coming on to chat with us. We really enjoyed it. We got some amazing answers, some really cool stories. <laughs> and just a, a super fun time. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks to you guys to, you know, to put in, for putting this together and having me. Uh, it was really a pleasure talking to you guys. Great. Yeah. Thanks so much. We are definitely looking forward to seeing you play in the CPL and, and uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be fun to watch. I'm looking forward to it yeah. a lot, a lot wait, actually. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, hopefully we're gonna see you really really soon and i'll be cheering doubly when we will both be cheering doubly when we see your score with your left foot <laughs> <laughs> for sure for sure yeah i remember that okay well thank you so much ibra and hopefully we'll see you in person next time <laughs> all right good thank you guys yeah all right yeah. bye okay, yeah bye -bye. thanks ibra bye thanks bye